bless your face. Hello. All right, four years ago, I tried virtual reality for the first time, and I was completely blown away. I was at my friend's house, and immediately I put the headset on, and I just never seen anything like it. And when I took the headset off, my friend, who's now my business partner, looked at me and said, I think I can create it. And I just looked at him and said, if you can create it, I can do everything else. And so we literally started our company right then and there. So to give you a little bit of background, I came from the marketing and advertising world. I did a lot of experiential and social uh, influencer marketing. And my business partner and our founder, uh, Morris May, came from Hollywood Visual Effects. So we both had built our careers in storytelling, but in completely different ways. And I never really understood how different our worlds were until we started working together. And it's really become one of our biggest assets, is, is basically the fact that I had no idea what my genius partner was saying for the first year. Um, to give you an example of that, I remember in the early days we went to an agency meeting, and we left the meeting, it was great, and Morris was talking about how he's trying to manage their expectations and they don't have the budget to create these bullets and he's thinking of muzzle shots and all these things in CG. And I'm looking at him like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, this was a great meeting. And then I realized, like, no, not those kinds of bullets. Like, they mean a PowerPoint with a slide with things like increase engagement and drive loyalty and things like that. So it became very obvious that this was going to take a lot of different uh, understanding from each other. So this is actually just a quick photo of me when I had to quickly become the camera person because it turns out when you're the founding team of two, you have to learn everyone else's job. But because of that, it's really given us a strength at specular theory because the reality right now is that VR is very complicated still to make, even though it's getting easier. And what we have is a lot of production studios that are getting into the tech or they're adding VR to their services, but they've never really worked with brands or agencies before. And so you've got creative agencies that don't, have the tech or they don't have the means to have the tech, and you've got technology companies that aren't necessarily storytellers. So you really don't want to be one of, of these three things. You really want to be all three of them. So right in the middle, in that intersection of what makes great VR is definitely the skill sets and multi multidisciplinary skill sets that it takes. But I also think it requires a language and an understanding of each. And so while working with Morris and founding this company a couple of years later, I've just realized that a lot of marketers are using VR, but very few of them actually work in VR. So I thought I'd take a minute today just to sort of help translate from the trenches to uh, the masses what's kind of going on. And I feel like a lot of talks have been really general, not at this summit, but uh, in general, or they're too technical. So I'm hoping today that we'll just start kind of in the middle. Uh, beginning with the terminology. Everyone has this battle of, is it going to be VR or MR or AR? Is it XR? And the point I'm trying to get across to some people who get this confusion is these acronyms, I think, are confusing content creators, they're confusing businesses, and it's confusing to consumers. At the end of the day, it's really about having immersive technology. So why is immersive technology so amazing? And why is it such a big deal? Well, for starters, because the world is not flat. So we don't believe our experiences of it should be either. And this is one of the greatest moments in history. In fact, I would say it's the digital equivalent to realizing that the world, in fact, is not flat. So the fact that we don't have to live in these square boxes and flat screens to tell our stories can bring a lot of advantages to the way that we experience brands, uh, become another person, the way that you understand the world. So we're really moving from that information age to the experience economy to immersive economy. So to give you kind of a different perspective, uh, which is a great word for my company in particular, because one of the biggest pieces we had in 2014 and 2015 actually was a series we created called Perspective. And the idea behind it is that you could use the headset and the technology to become another person and relive the same event through different people's perspectives. And the reason this was so powerful is because it it showed for the first time how you can use this technology in ways that you just possibly couldn't do before. And so it really had this authentic use to the medium. 
So as much as people complain or talk about these days about how much you know, maybe consumers don't want to wear a headset and it's clunky and ridiculous and the resolution isn't good enough. I can tell you firsthand that when the experience is good, no one complains about wearing the headset. And when the story is great, no one complains about the pixels. We shot Perspective in 2014 and we still to this day, like, to this day get emails requesting to see if they, people can share it. So it kind of brings me to this <laughs> math formula I have uh, called x equals y. And really when you're thinking of x, for experiences, it's really just having a purpose and finding a unique use of the medium. Like We really want to use this tool to solve problems and tell stories in ways that we couldn't do before. So if you, can, if you have a story or something that you could see on another screen, if it's your computer or your mobile phone or any other device, our sort of philosophy as a company is that it's probably not an authentic use of the medium. Now, you can certainly take great IP and great stories and create, craft an authentic use for it, but I think the story really needs to be different. Uh, one of the other examples of things we're doing now, actually with Accenture that we just released about a, a couple of weeks ago, to give you an example, was they wanted to share a vision for the future of virtual reality and commerce. And so we crafted a experience that we wanted to combine different technologies in different ways, but make it something that you could do now. So we're maximizing sort of the possibilities, but in a way that doesn't uh, go past the barrier to where the technology isn't ready yet. I don't know if this video will play. So there's no audio, but this was a mobile-based experience. And the idea is that it's gaze-driven, and we use branching narrative and live action. So the fashion stylist here, Julia Clancy, is asking you as a user which dress you want to choose. And depending on which dress you choose, you can look at that. And then using branching narrative and creative, we actually make the story happen and unfold in front of you, which is a really powerful concept as a consumer, because you can end up watching a great experience and being immersed in the behind the scenes of this fashion shoot, but you're also learning from real pros in the industry and beauty, and then you're actually seeing your choices affect the outcome of the shoot. And then you can choose to shop or favorite it. So I, I could talk all day probably about content and kind of what makes great content, but at the end of the day, to kind of help summarize, I think it goes back to being uniquely immersive. Uh, it's got to be built from the ground up. You really can't back into the story on this one. Uh, we really try and build the tech to tell the best story. Um, you know, Non-traditional in the sense of it does require a lot of creative and technical kung fu from these traditional mediums. But this is a new medium. It requires new ways of thinking and new tools and being original for that purpose. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is just marketing and how we're marketing to consumers. And I'm sure everyone has seen these images. I just pulled this from Google Images. But I can't tell you how many times I see pictures of people just wearing the headset. So I just want to say and put it out there, I think we really, as an industry, need to stop selling VR and start selling the experiences. And a good example of that is if you look at Simon Sinek's kind of golden circle, he has a great TED talk about this, is that a lot of companies explain and know what they do and how they do it, but very few can actually articulate why they do it. So when you think about going to the movies, for example, you're not selling the movie by showing pictures of people in their seats like with their reaction, right? You're actually selling what, who's in the story and what the trailer is going to be. So if you think of VR in that sense, it's not necessarily like this is how you put on a headset and this is how your reaction is going to be. It's really thinking about the experience and the fact that, you know, do you want to go to Mars and hang out with your friends and listen to your favorite DJ? Do you want to travel back in time? All of these things that I think are very missed opportunities of problems that we could solve right now. Uh, another thing that I don't necessarily complain about, but some people talk about when is this going to be mainstream? Like when is when are the devices going to penetrate to be meaningful enough to hit mainstream? And while there are certainly technical issues and hardware issues that need to be worked out in terms of us also learning how to master the creative, I think we need to be considering more about mainstream content. And particularly with locations right now, a lot of times of the content that you're seeing is uh, you know, zombies or first-person shooters. So I really encourage everyone as a community to start thinking about games or experiences that you can have that are for all ages for everybody. And I'll just kind of end on this quote because I'm running out of time, but I think Adam Grant said it. It was from the book uh, Originals, but it just says, products don't create value, customers do. And I think that's something to definitely consider in this new medium. So thank you.